Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is the best damn EDC, and it's been a year since I've done an EDC update. I'm pretty sure. We were looking at this yesterday. Also, it's Ricky behind the camera. I don't have a camera to point at him, but it's Ricky. Captain Ricky over on Instagram is helping me shoot some videos now and edit. Thank you very much, Ricky. So this is my updated everyday carry as of like six weeks ago. Uh, and with that said, let's do the damn thing. So let's start with the stuff that hasn't changed, keys. So I have pretty much the exact same setup that I've had for a long time. The only real thing that changed recently or semi-recently or since the last video is that uh, I'm now using an Urban Carver's Keeper, which is a magnetic quick release, but it has the key organizer on the quick release. This is a relatively new product. Um, this is the Carry Commission version and titanium with Topo lasered all over the whole thing. Before this, I was just using some form of a shackle on here as well. I think it was that true utility one that's been out of stock for ages or just discontinued. So the Urban Carver's Keeper is the new addition here, but everything else is the exact same. So we have the Function F key from Nice Guy Machine Company. a JRW Tough Clip Carry Commission collaboration, and then this guy, which is the Civivi, is it called the Keybit? I don't remember the name, but this is just a little double-sided Torx bit for just quick maintenance, tightening a pivot, fixing a pocket clip. Comes in handy a lot, but that's the key setup, and it's been pretty damn solid for well over a year now. It's just this was the one big upgrade. So keys finally got them settled. The wallet also has not changed pretty much at all. Um, I've carried a few here and there just to try some new things out, but I keep coming back to this. My buddy Joe, who's right down the hall, makes these for us. This is a carry commission exclusive version of the Rustic Heirloom Hitchhiker. He makes these in all sorts of different colors and variations, but this is the one, one of the ones that we do. We have this uh, olive color, and then we also have a cognac, which is uh, the, the Olmo, I guess is the actual term for the leather color, but we call it cognac. So we have two different variations of it. And uh, I, of course, have a leather lanyard with a Nice Guy Machine Company bead on here. Just a really simple, minimalist wallet with a snap. So you have cards up front, loose cash back, and I also have some, uh, those lock picks from Grim Workshop. These things stay in here. I haven't really lock picked much since that video, but these have stayed in here just in case. They don't take up much space and keeps my wallet slim still. So there you have it, that's the wallet. The other two things, these stay in the fifth pocket. These never change. These are in the pocket every single day, always. We have the SOG Power Pint, which I'm sure you're tired of hearing me talk about, as well as the TPT Slide. I'm sure you're tired of that one too, but I'm gonna be honest. These are never not on me. I always have these every day. Um, <laughs> as Ricky has learned, this right here is the magic key. <laughs> My son locks the door behind me everywhere I go. I go through a door, he runs behind and locks the door. This is how I get back through that door, at least inside the house. Outside, I just hope he has some mercy and lets me back in. <laughs> but yeah, the power pint is just a really handy little tool. You've got the bit driver in the end and just a good selection of tools. Fantastic EDC multi-tool for 50 bucks. Really good selection of tools. I do think they could be better, but this is, I think, best bang for buck as far as money and size in an EDC multi-tool. You guys know all about the TPT slide. This is the best damn EDC version in Topo. It's available in black and the Stonewash over at Exclusive and at Carry Commission. Um, it's just a really handy tool. I use this as a camera plate tool and I break down boxes almost daily with this. So the pen has actually not been this for the majority of the year. Uh, I would say that the most carried pin for me this year so far would be the Fountain EDC in Zirconium from Big Idea Design. But going in shorts and kind of going a little bit lighter with my carry in the summer, I've switched back to this, which is the dual side click mini in Zirconium with a Timascus clip. I just love this pin. I love the dual side click. It's a little fidgety. I like it a lot. That's really all I can say about it. The only thing is that sometimes it does actuate in my pocket where a you know, bolt action wouldn't, but I still like the dual side click. AirPods and iPhone, I mean, nothing has really changed there at all. These are constant every day. If I answer a call, I'm not even gonna even think about answering it. 
unless I put my AirPod in first. So AirPods Pro stay in my pocket. The flashlight. So this one is new to me as a Blade Show, if you saw in my Blade Show haul video, if you want to call it that. Before this, it was always a back and forth between the Okluma DC0 and the CWF Micro Arcadian Click in Titanium. Charles tossed this to me at Blade Show and said, I want you to carry it and tell me what you think. But this is the CWF Peanut. So this is an 18350 flashlight with a triple emitter. It does have a secondary light that is programmable. This is featuring the new Quantum Dragon Driver, which is very, very, very thin, which is why this can be an 18350 flashlight and so short. I mean, this is like the DC-1 but way smaller. Um, it's a lot of power in a tiny flashlight. So this says it features the Quantum Dragon Driver, which offers programmable secondary RGB LEDs. So the secondary can be red, blue, or green. You have power levels, memory, and a triple tap strobe. Also included is thermal regulation and voltage protection. It's very compact. It is $579, so this is not a cheap flashlight by any means, but it is one of the best flashlights I've ever used by far. It's so good. So watches, um, I've not been changing watches a whole lot lately. Basically, well, I made a mistake this morning um, to make this video. I, I normally throw my Ultra, Apple Watch Ultra on the wrist when I go to the gym, and for whatever reason this morning, I, I just grabbed the Garmin instead, and uh, yeah. I would say I wear the Apple Watch Ultra more than the Garmin, but in general, I don't wear a smartwatch or a fitness tracker outside the gym. So typically how a day goes is I have a smartwatch on when the day starts. I, I wear this to bed pretty much every night because this is my alarm. I don't wake up to normal alarms. I need something to like grab my wrist and shake it. And that's what this thing is really good at. So this is my alarm. If I need to wake up, this is on the wrist. Um, I typically, without an alarm, still wake up just fine, but if I need to, this one's definitely going on when I go to bed, and I'll still leave it on and go to the gym like I did this morning, but most of the time, if I'm working out, I'm, I'm wearing the Apple Watch Ultra. I still haven't made the video talking about which one I would choose or any of that, and it's because I don't have an opinion. I love them both, and I don't know how to choose, so I, I go back and forth, but I don't love smart watches. I still love wearing analog watches. That's just the fact of the matter. And lately, I guess really ever since I remembered that I can put this watch on a titanium bracelet from RZE, I've really been wearing the crap out of this watch. I mean, this is what I've worn the whole time you've been here, right? This uh, Big Idea Design TI Field Watch. It's thin, it's light, it looks great. It looks even better on the bracelet, I think. And uh, yeah, this has been the constant. So TI Field Watch from Big Idea Design. This is always the part in an EDC update video that I struggle with. It's knives. And it's because I change knives a lot. Like sometimes, several times a day. It's hard to just choose one. So uh, here are the knives that have been in rotation. We have seven, uh, four folding knives, three fixed blades, you guys are probably pr pretty familiar with all of these, but we're gonna we're just gonna go through them really quickly, and uh, we'll start with the fixed blades. So, both of these were pickups from uh, Blade Show. I talked about them in the Blade Show haul video. They've gone in the pocket on the belt, like I've continued to carry them. We have here the Tcal Piranha and the LT Wright. Frontier first in Magna Cut with a Python micarta handle. Uh, you may notice a difference on this Piranha is that I don't have black G10 scales on it. That's the ones they gave me at, at Blade Show. Now I have this micarta, like this OD green micarta handle. Uh, and that was something I asked them. I was like, do you guys sell these scales separately? Yes, they do. And I got a set of OD green micarta because I think it looks better. It looks more me. Uh, the black was fine, OD and micarta. Nice. This came in the mail just a few days after the scale that I got here did as well. And this has a signet ring. Is that what it is? Signet? And I'm going to try to put it on here real quick. So now, if you want, you can pull that out and do that like seriously increases that grip. That is quite nice. Like I'm not typically a fan of rings on the handles and knives, just not my style. But for this one, it definitely increases like if that's in my pocket, I feel a little bit, I feel a little bit more ninja, but like, yeah, I like that. And then this one, I, I've carried this one a little bit less, but this is the Topps Knives Bull Trial. So I've had one of these before. I ended up getting rid of it. And then Topps at 
blade show, they're like, is there anything you want to try or check out? And I was like, I've been on a huge fixed blade kick. I'm getting to be a little more okay with a belt sheath for a very small knife like that. Uh, so what about the bull trout? And they had one made and sent to me and it stayed on the belt some. I really like it. It's just, I keep switching things out and changing things up and it's kind of gone in and out of rotation, but really, really solid knife. I love, love it's like a hey, minimalist that should have been, right? That's why I like this thing because that has great ergos and everything, but this has ergos and a, I think a better blade. It is 154 cm and just feels like a beefcake, but not too thick of a grind or, or a stock and grind to make it unusable, I guess. Uh, I really like it a lot. All right, so as far as folders, uh, you guys know this. I got, also got this at Blade Show. This is the Monterey Bay Knives Sea Otter and also a Magna Cut, just a really solid knife. Uh, I think pretty much everybody loves this knife. Some people may think it's a little understated. I really like that about it. It's simple. It's exactly what it needs to be. Gets the job done, goes in the pocket, carries well, looks well, flicks well. Like there's nothing about this knife that I don't like. I did have a little bit of lock stick when I got it and that's gone. Um, I just adjusted things, cleaned it up, put it back together. No more lock stick. So this thing has been probably the most carried knife since Blade Show. At Blade Show, I handed this knife to Jonathan over at McNeese. I said, we, we had talked about it before Blade Show, but I asked him if I could bring this to him and give it to him and have it fixed. So I had a little bit of detent lash that wasn't there when I got the knife. I know that knife had been QC'd. I carried the knife, I made the video, I used the knife, I love the knife. And then all of a sudden there was detent lash, which wasn't there. And I talked about it with Jonathan. I'm like, I don't understand because it wasn't there. And now it is. Yeah, he had no idea either, but regardless, they took it in and fixed it. So no more detent lash, it's rock solid. Like that thing, if I did this right here before, you could hear it rattling. So it wasn't like a major, major issue. It was very subtle, but it was annoying. And they fixed it, sent it back to me, and they basically just totally refinished the knife. So the McNeese nice PM Mac 2 3.5. I really missed carrying this knife. It's a beefcake. It feels like it's ready for work. I love it. It's one of my top five knives. It's one of the ones that I said I'd never sell, and I still stand by that. I love this one and the Automac. This I got like days after Blade Show. And this is the Wear Knives Wolf P or the Wear Wolf P. See what you did there, Matt. I see what you did there, Matt. It's the Werewolf. It's actually kind of badass, but the knife itself is also badass. So this one comes with M390 blade steel, hollow grind. Uh, and I just love that blade shape. If you haven't noticed, I've just got a thing for these like big wide drop point blades. It's just my thing, man. These are actually very similar knives in terms of shape, but this one has just a really nice thin handle instead of this chunky thing. Something to be said for both. This knife is gorgeous. The action on it is freaking great. And if you've handled one of the production knives from where the previous being the Lucas P, this thing feels like a significantly more refined knife. I've talked about it with Matt and they, there's like pocket milling on this one. The other one, there's not. This one is much lighter and it just feels better, honestly. In the hand, the action, the weight of it, like everything feels just a little bit better. All right. And the last one, this is one that just I don't know. It's just always been there and I don't carry it a ton. Blade HQ sent this to me. <laughs> I don't even know how, how long ago. This is the Tour Knives Merchant 2. And I know that Tour Knives had some flack or caught some flack over this knife. This is, I think the original one, uh, just for QC. And this one for me has been perfect. Uh, it's a little finicky, I will say. So when I first got it, the pivot kept running out and I'd Loctite it and it would still run out. I put just a little more Loctite on it and it seemed to be fine, but getting it tuned while trying to Loctite that pivot was probably the biggest issue or biggest hurdle because it's like just the slightest turn and it'd be over tightened and just the slightest turn in the other direction and it would be loose. So very, very, very subtle tuning on it. But other than that, after I got that pivot right, it's been great. I would say the detent on it is a little light because you can just kind of as I'm trying to demonstrate, it doesn't work, but you can kind of just misfire on the, the flick. The spidey flicking works fine. I have no problems with this. And this, how do I say this where people are going to not think I'm an idiot? Um, <laughs> it feels almost like a cheaper alternative to a Sabenza, even though they don't have the same blade shape. The handle is very similar. It's this flat slab titanium frame lock um, and it comes with a deep carry. 
out of the box, which is nice. They are different, I get it. And I would say Chris Reeve is gonna be something I'd recommend over this in terms of QC time and time again. Like they're proven to be just flawless, right? And they'll take care of it even if it's not. But I, I would say if you're wanting something Sabenza-esque and you don't wanna spend Sabenza money, this is a good contender. Um, you get washers, frame lock, thumb studs, and it fixes some of the things that some people don't like about the Sabenza being Sabenza thumb from those pointy studs, deep carry clip. It's not a Sabenza. I'm not trying to say it is, and it's not super close to a Sabenza, but it is similar in ways, especially in the hand. I don't know how to like explain that better than I have, but yeah, that's where we're at. Tour Knives Merchant 2. I've been digging it lately, so it's been in the pocket. And that's it, that's it. I've had some, you know, musical knives, but other than that, my carry has really, really, really narrowed down to just the same basic things pretty much all the time. Same wallet, same flashlight, pretty much the same watch all the time, same pen, same tools. Like it's, it's kind of down to an art for me or science rather. But yeah, this is it. Uh, Everything that I talked about in the video will be linked in the description down below. And if you got any questions about any of this stuff, ask me in the comments and I'll try to get to them. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, carry on.